Welcome to Church on the Air, your special online TV. Psalm 15, 1 and 2. Psalm 15, 1 and 2 says, Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? He that walketh uprightly and walketh righteousness and speaketh the truth in his heart was is the reply. He that walketh uprightly and walketh righteousness and speaketh the truth in his heart. The psalmist was and continued to be a man after God's heart. Why? Because his memory lingers on and is ever fresh. The lessons to be learned from him is ever fresh. He was a man that tasted after righteousness and loved the tabernacle of the Most High. He loved so very much and so envied even the gatekeepers of the temple. And in his meditation, he began to ask, Who shall dwell in this holy hill? Who shall abide in the tabernacle? We know now that we are the temples of the living God. It is no longer the issue of a building. We, the humans, are walking, living temples of God. And he's saying, you turn that question around, it will now be, in what kind of heart can God abide? In what kind of body can God abide? And the answer is that he that walketh uprightly and walketh righteousness and speaketh the truth in his heart. So, we need to now make a self-examination to see, to say, I say I'm a child of God. You say you're a child of God. And the question will be, are you walking uprightly? Are you walking in righteousness? Do you speak the truth in your heart? It says in his heart, because there are those who even deceive themselves. Deceive themselves. So we have three points here. He that walketh uprightly, he that walketh righteousness, and he that speaketh the truth in his heart. I'll take the last one of the truth and start with that to say that a lot of us lie even to ourselves. Sometimes in counseling, I just look at some people and I say to them, you must speak the truth to yourself. Speak the truth to yourself. And I make an analogy and I say, if I deceive you one time, yes, I may get away with it two times, yes. Three times, the possibility is very rare. But sometimes, for some of us, I might as say, you are too gullible. <laughs> That's what you will say. You say, you are too gullible. Because anything you tell me, I believe you. But I'll be looking at you. I won't say you are telling lies. Even when you are telling lies, I'll just be looking at you. I'll be looking at you. Like a fool, like Mumu. <laughs> I know what I think in my heart and already have my impressions, but I just keep going be looking at you. And then you just look and say, you, you are too gullible. But of course, in my gullibility, you can't deceive me one, two, three times. It's a lie. <laughs> but when you deceive yourself, who can save you? Who can deliver you from yourself? And so in this clip, I would like to say that let's not deceive ourselves. Let's speak the truth to ourselves. Take stock. Look at where you are at. Look at where you have been. Look at where you are coming from. And look at yourself and ask yourself, where am I going? How am I faring? How am I doing? I usually don't let each day pass by without asking myself, what have I done today? How did I spend my day? Once it is 12 o'clock, I begin to make a self-examination. It's 12 noon. 12 noon, what have I done? What have I achieved? How have I fared? 
12 o oh. if i tell before 12 i do it like say 3 hours to 2 hours i wake very early sometimes too between 2 and 4 i ask myself what did i do between 4 and 6 what have i done between 6 and 9 what have i done ah <laughs> and when it is 12 noon it is like hey what did you do what did you achieve then once it is two, three, I say, ah, <laughs> the self-examination become more critical. We must examine ourselves. Not only in terms of achievements, but in terms of our relationships, in terms of our thoughts, in terms of our words, in terms of our work, in terms of our standard of living, we must speak the truth to ourselves in our relationships, in our dealings. We must speak the truth. So the psalm is in Psalm 15, 1 to 2. Say, Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in your holy hill? And we turned the question to say, We are now the temple of God. And the question is, What kind of body can God dwell in? What kind of heart can God dwell in? And we said the answer is he that walketh uprightly, walketh righteousness, and speaketh the truth in his heart. We are reigning on truth, like I've said. And we close by saying, make a self-examination. Are you speaking the truth to yourself? Or are you living in a world of delusion? Are you deceiving yourself? Like I've said, you can deceive me and cheat me, but for how long? But when I am the one deceiving myself, who will deliver me from myself? <laughs> and so we close by that. A lot of us point a lot of finger like this. I didn't go to school because of my uncle. I didn't do this because of my husband. I didn't do that because of my wife. I didn't do this. <laughs> I had um, a pastor's wife came counseling because we are actually ministers to pastors. We have a forum ministers of the truth forum for pastors wives and women in ministries we do a lot of counseling and just this week one came and said ah, my husband is not allowing me to hold the microphone my husband does not allow me to do anything in fact i can't even sing or do anything in the church nothing and i say hey. i even want to pack out i want to go and rent a place i said to do what at this age with grown-up children <laughs> Must you hold the microphone? Must you hold the microphone? Must you? What are you dragging? <laughs> when there is a very useful administration, carry your phone like this, put it like this. <laughs> the whole world will be hearing you. <laughs> I said, oh, mommy, I wish I had come earlier. The whole world will be hearing you all over the world. Go public. <laughs> all over the world. And you want to drag a local champion of the city. Sit at the back. Oh, does it remove anything from you? By the special grace of God, I'm a very senior officer. Yes, I'm approaching 30 years in ministry. But even in gardens and all, you see me at the back. They say, well, you're a senior officer, officer in PFN. What are you doing there? You're a senior officer. I don't, I don't, I don't answer anybody. You didn't remove anything from me. Even in my services, I sit at the back. Yes, everybody you know that I enjoy sitting at the back because it does not remove nothing. So what are you dragging microphone for? Well, speak the truth to yourself. Nobody is hindering you. Nobody is stopping you. Nobody can except you stop yourself. Nobody can. In any field, in any form, in any way. Your parents didn't train you to go to school. You can go. There's open university. You can go to work and train yourself. Whatever be the excuses we make for ourselves, it's time to speak the truth to ourselves. The Bible says in Psalm 15, 2, that God can only dwell in that heart that speaketh the truth in his heart. We're not even talking about the truth outside now. That was a different one. <laughs> Yoruba have a saying. Yoruba is a major language in Nigeria. They say, any affair lamo or many to feni. That means I like you, I know. But who likes me, I don't know. Because a lot of people come in, a lot, a lot of people are not speaking the truth at all to themselves. They tell lies. They'll be smiling, meanwhile they hate you. 
Thank you so very much for streamlining with us. My name is Pastor Mrs. Edith Adeke, General Vasia, Ban of Love Ministries International. I have to go for a meeting now. God bless you. We'll be back shortly. <laughs>